Okay, chances are when you're managing any sort of pest, you're going to need to use some sort of pesticide. And if you're doing integrated pest management, you're going to want to use something that is not as toxic. Biorational pesticides include natural or biological pesticides and tend to be uh, lower in toxicity than some of the other products, but not always. So a pesticide is something that kills something and so the umbrella term is pesticide and then you break it down according to what the pest is. You've got insecticide, herbicide, miticide, fungicide, etc. So the EPA definition of a pesticide is any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing, destroying, repelling, or mitigating any pest. Under U.S. law, a pesticide is also any substance or mixture of substances intended for use as a plant regulator, defoliant, or desiccant. The, the important thing to note is that the uh, overall law is always going to be the U.S. law and then state by state may take it further. So in Washington state, you must have surfactants and stickers registered as pesticides as well. Other products you can use are minimum risk pesticides. These are minimum risk pesticides are a special class of pesticides. They're not subject to federal registration requirements because their ingredients, they're active and inert, are demonstrated to be safe for the intended use. So here's just some of the products you might see on this list. Uh, rosemary, mint and mint oil, linseed oil, geranium oil. However, if you are managing pests professionally, you can't just make your own mixture. You need to buy a product that is formulated especially for dealing with the pests that you're trying to target. So botanical pesticides are thought to be relatively non-toxic. They're thought to have limited ecological effects. Some but not all are approved for use in organic production. These include botanicals, microbials, minerals, and synthetic materials. So botanical pesticides are naturally occurring chemicals that they take from plants. These are available as alternatives to synthetic chemicals, but they're not necessarily less toxic to humans or other organisms. Some of them are the most deadly fast-acting toxins and potent carcinogens that occur naturally, such as nicotine. Some botanical pesticides are very toxic to fish and other animals. You still need to wear protective clothing. The thing about them is they do break down readily in the soil, so they're not going to be stored in plant or animal tissue. Rotenone is a botanical pesticide derived from the roots of some selected Fabaceae. It's found either as a powder formulation from ground plant roots or extracted uh, from the roots to make liquid or crystalline formulation. It's a non-specific insecticide and may have some su success against arachnids. So when it's formulated as emulsified concentrate, it's highly toxic. It carries a signal or a danger on its label. Other forms of the insecticide are slightly toxic and require the signal world word caution instead, but it is extremely toxic to fish, so it's really important to read your labels. Pyrethrum are fast-acting poisons derived from the pyrethrum daisy. It is toxic to cold-blooded animals. Some people and most cats have allergic reactions to it. It's effective on most insects, but it does not control mites. It does break down fairly quickly in sunlight, air, and water. Half-light is one to two hours, and it's not to be confused with permethrin, which is a pyrethroid. That's a synthetic product that has actually got a much longer half-life. Neem comes from the Azadiracta indica plant that grows in tropical regions. 
And what it does is it works as an insect growth regulator, inhibiting the development of stages of insects. It may also be a feeding deterrent for some insects. It's been reported to control over 200 types of insects, mites, and nematodes, and can also be used as a fungicide. So with organic pesticides, just because it's natural doesn't mean it's always safe. It may still be toxic. You still want to think of chemical controls as the last resort. So when you're using neem, uh, it should not be exposed to sunlight. It must be prepared with water and the temperature of the water needs to be 50 to 90 degrees. The solution is effective for only eight hours after mixing. It's most affected under humid conditions or when the insect or plants are damp. It does have a low toxicity to mammals. So some of the microbials that you'll see are Bacillus thuringiensis, and so you've got, uh, or BT, BT kerstaki is for Lepidoptera, that's for butterflies and moths. BT israeliensis is for Diptera, which are going to be in the fly family. So in the garden world, it might be for dealing with um, fungus gnats. BT San Diego and P BT tenebrionis is for Coleoptera which is the beetle family or order. Bovaria bassiana is an insecticide and Mycostop and Gliogard work for root rot organisms. So it's really important that you are aware of what else is going on. Uh, this is from a couple of years ago, the Oregon Department of Agriculture was going to apply BT Kerstaki for Asian gypsy moth. And so they put this uh, graphic up to show when they were planning on applying it. And you will see that there are some other non-target organisms that might get hit, but uh, for the most part, it's probably the safest time of year to do it. And of course, they're targeting the life cycle that they are trying to get on the Asian gypsum, gypsy moth. So minerals such as sulfur can be used for foliar diseases. Kaolin clay can be used as an insecticide. It's used for apple maggot coddling moth. It also uh, works for sunburn protection. It coats the foliage with kind of this clay material. So soaps can be used. Fatty acids of potassium salts used as an insecticide. Uh, safer soap is what people think about here. Horticultural oils can be used as insecticides. Potassium bicarbonate can be used as a fungicide. It's very effective on powdery mildew. So with insecticidal soap, all soaps have long chain fatty acids, but not all these soaps have insecticidal properties. And you know, the thing is that, again, if you're going to use this as a professional, you can't just mix up some uh, dishwashing liquid and think it's going to work uh, legally. You're going to want to use insecticidal soap. So they're specifically formulated to have high insect killing properties. They're contact only. That means you have to hit the insect. If you don't, you're not. You're wasting the product and wasting your time. Uh, good coverage is essential. So they kill susceptible insects by washing away the protective coating on the surface of the insect, disrupting their normal membrane functions inside the insect. There's no residual activity toward other insects or even the pests, so you have to repeat applications. Uh, but some plants may have some phytotoxic reactions to them, so you do need to test it on there. Um, and some things like whole crops and some ornamentals are sensitive to the burn caused by the soap. So it's just one product. You may want to rotate this out with neem.